Right, day, what is it? Six. Six. Friday. Oh, we're still at this. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm with my awesome team and we're seven o'clock, trackers on. Up a big mountain today. Looks like it's gonna be thermals today. <laughs> All right. Rewards. This is a flying site. All the way around there. And all the way around there. Pick a launch. Any wind direction. And fly far. Once you have it, you can link so much good terrain and skip all the bad landing zones. This is the first day that has given me this freedom. I circle higher and higher and glide to the next thermal source, weaving my way through the competitors, then pausing to avoid treacherous patches of sinking air. This flight is working. I finally found my flow. So that's probably the high point of the competition for me. That climb through and being set up on this ridge. And now I can go and try and catch everybody behind Kasterhorn. Back to Earth. <laughs> that was exceptional. It's gonna take me quite a while to process that flight. It was on the limit at times. I mean, just the exposure, the moving through the landscape. <laughs> you know, there's such a narrow band that you can fly cross country in. When the thermals are powerful, but they're not too powerful that they're gonna overpower your wing. I mean, they had collapses and things that I was dealing with and a lot of active flying, um, but it was cool. I could climb and I could get up and I could use the thermals I felt like I could feel what they were doing today so I could ride them I was happy to ride them but this terrain moving through these mountains oh man it's so borderline there's like you're sitting on a ridge and the winds coming through and you've got like 10 k's an hour forward speed on the ridge when the thermals come through and a little bit more than that and you're going to get pushed over. So the whole time I'm waiting, making sure that there's no wind coming through, climbing before going over to the next one. And uh, then I got into this last valley. And even though Kerry had told me that there was no wind on, in the valley and he'd sort of scouted it ahead of me, as I got into the valley, I could see the valley wind hitting the lake. Now I'm at a thousand meters and I'm looking down and I can see the lake's got wind on it. So at that point you're like, you're either going to sit there on speed bar and meet that valley wind head on in the valley that you're in, or you get height and you run and you try and run ahead of the valley wind. And uh, that's kind of what I did. I ran 
up bigger and bigger and bigger terrain, getting closer and closer and closer to the spine of the Pyrenees. And <laughs> that valley wind was coming with me the whole time. I wasn't quite quick enough. So I was hoping that some of it would splatter onto the big ridge and I'd only have the sort of weaker um, tail of it, which I think I got. And I found this absolutely beautiful big landing area. So I just chose this for the lack of rocks <laughs> and the ability for me to bounce on it and get dragged on it. And uh, I set up upwind of it on speed bar and just allowed myself to drift in and kill the wing. And I was on the limit. I think if there was more valley wind, I would have been scared with that landing. As it was, I was concerned. <laughs> but I felt like I could control it. So that was like right at the limit for me. Take it, take it.